What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 9 of my Eastside Hockey Manager Early Access Let's Play here with the Maple Leafs and today we're in Toronto. I think we're in Toronto. We're not. I've lied. I've lied completely. We are on our way to Montreal to take on the Canadians so we're going to be taking on the Habs today. It's going to be a big game for us. Last time we met was actually since the last episode we won 5-4 and if we can have half the game that we had here it's going to be an exciting episode but before that we have to talk about what's happened since the last episode this time there has been a lot more games to talk about so I'm not going to go through them all in a ton of detail and I will just glance over a few but if you missed last episode it was against the Senators and we won 6-5 uh, it was a shootout actually we won and that was the first shootout I've ever won in EHM. Before that, I'd lost my last three, so that was decent. Since the last episode, things have been a bit hit and miss, really. We've lost a few more games, we've relied on overtime for a few more wins, and it's it's just not quite been as convincing, I guess. You can see here, we lost to the Oilers for six, we then lost to the, um, the Devils, as you can see here, 5-2. Uh, we then beat the Coyotes, which was a decent result because we had lost to them previously, despite them being by far and away the weakest team in their conference, and they are kind of miles behind the pack if we just take a look here at the Western Conference. They've only got 34 points, so I was more relieved than anything to get that win. Unfortunately, we then lost to the Flyers 5-3, which is a little bit disappointing, especially given the fact that well, for a large spell of it, they were by far and away the better team. It was 4-1 uh, after the second. Good to see Nylander get on the score sheet, though, I guess. He's done a, a decent job for us, the youngster, so far, giving him as much ice time as possible, and he's kind of relished under it. Anyway, as you can see, since then, we lost to the Devils again, but we did beat the Predators after overtime, which was quite nice. Um, it was a relief more than anything, but this one was settled in the actual overtime itself rather than a shootout. And then since then, it's been a slightly better run of form, I guess. We beat the New York Rangers 4-2, which was a good result. It was quite a comfortable win in the end. We then beat the Islanders, which was another decent result. The Islanders, of course, one of the teams for whom we have a pick of in the draft. And as you can see right now, they're in 14th. And, um, of course, we've got the lottery coming up eventually for the draft. And if you don't know, I'll, I'll just to explain, because there have been a few people in the comments ask about the draft. Essentially, all the youth prospects are picked out one at a time, and the lower down, the earlier the pick you get. So um, that's how it works. But the way that the lottery works, which is an additional thing, is basically all the teams in the bottom half outside of the playoffs in both conferences are given a chance to get the very first pick. And it's kind of done completely randomly, although it is weighted. So the teams nearer the bottom have a higher chance of getting it. So I believe some of the teams for whom we have picks of include uh, the Islanders. Uh, I think we have the Sabres pick as well. And then there's one other, which I can't actually remember who it's with. But we have a few of the picks of the lower down teams. So I'm hoping that the Islanders can continue to struggle so we can maybe have a slightly better chance at getting... Uh, Connor McDavid in that first draft pick because let's face it that's who everyone's going after anyway there was that win against the Habs as well in this run of fixtures I kind of mentioned that briefly but this was a good performance we were actually 3-1 down in the first we came back to go ahead 4-3 they pulled us back right at the death in a power play unfortunately for them however or rather fortunately for us the Leafs Kessel came big in the overtime getting us the all-important goal Anyway, next game was a 4-3 defeat to the Panthers at home. Kessel getting a goal, but it wasn't enough. This game was almost dead after the first kind of um, period because we were already, well, 4-1 down. And we tried to fight back, but there wasn't enough in it for us. The next result was against the Hurricanes where we won 5-2. We then beat the Jets after overtime. Another good result. A few overtime wins, as you can see here, but they're wins nevertheless. And the last result was against the Flyers where we lost 3-4. So that was pretty disappointing, as you can see here. They actually came from behind in the third to win, so I was slightly heartbroken when that happened. Anyway, looking at the NHL table, so you can see here for our conference, we're currently in third still. We have now played a few extra games over a few other teams. Worth noting at this point that we probably are going to make the playoffs with around 10 games left. 
oh sorry, 20 games left even, um, unless something goes really horribly wrong. I don't want to get too complacent just yet, but we do find ourselves in a very good position. Uh, the Habs, who we're playing today, are one of the teams in our conference and in our division as well, who are going to be looking to try and chase us. If they were to win here against us, it would mean that they can close the gap and they still have a game in hand. But even if they were to win, it would still be ahead of them by one point. It's still pretty tight, this table. One thing that I've noticed, and I don't know if this is a common thing in hockey, hockey but there isn't really any team winning every game you'd have to say Boston have done particularly well but with the exception of them very few teams on a massive win percentage and there seems to be a lot of teams really around that 50% mark and the 60% mark which is really seen the league be really tight this year but anyway that's what's been going on there in terms of player stats Kessel still going off uh, JVR as well, Reamsdyke still doing a job for us too you can see here they're actually the two top point scorers in the league which is slightly unprecedented, really. You can also see Kadri doing well. He's, of course, playing in our second line, and he's done a good job for us so far, Nazem Kadri. Um, still young, plenty of time to develop, potentially. You can see here, skilled forward with first-line potential, and he's done a very good job for us. Uh, you know, to be sick from the point-scoring tally is like nothing, really, to be too ashamed of. In terms of top-performing rookies, you can actually see here Nylander's 13th, which is pretty decent, because he has only played 37 games, so... You know, he's not played quite as many as some of the other players around him. You'd have to say that this guy, Jonathan Druin, is really kind of having a season to remember. I assume he was one of the early picks in his draft. Um, yeah, you can see here he was third pick in the 2013 draft. So he's doing some crazily good work for them. And also this guy, uh, Kuznetsov of the Capitals, is having a really good kind of opening season as a rookie. But anyway, uh, that's kind of what's been going on in the league. Of course, this has been quite a big leap forward in time. In terms of what's been going on in the squad since the last episode, which was a little while ago now, uh, no injuries to speak of, actually. Um, new ones, at least. Ericsson's still out with his... Um, or was still out. I can now remove him from the res injury reserve, actually. But he was out for a little while. But he's now back, which is good news. Uh, in terms of the actual team, things are looking pretty positive, um, you'd have to say. I can now... Uh, look to drop someone though now that I'm looking at it because uh, we've got players back from injury so I'm actually going to be Granberg I think to the Marlies just because he hasn't played too many games for us and we'll go with that so this is the team that we have looking at the average ratings you can see here that still Kessel and JVR really leading the way Bozak back from injuries bounced back fairly well of course, he was out for a little while previously. You can see in his last um, five, you know, a few, t well, a 10 there in his average range, but also two nines, an eight, and a seven. Good, consistent performances of a high standard. Cam Fowler also doing a really good job for us. He's been a essential part of our first team this year. Really kind of been one of our best defensemen, and um, he's got some good potential, and I'm hoping he can continue to kind of put in these kind of performances for the next few years. But anyway, that's kind of what's been going on there. Other than that, well, the trade deadline is now passed, I do believe, so there's no more trades happening. I did offer out Reimer, didn't get, get any offers that were kind of particularly appealing to me, so we're just going to stick with what we've got. I mentioned a few episodes ago about how I can work out how to see how um, players are progressing. It turns out if you go to the attributes view, you can actually see highlighted in green attributes which are uh, improving for players. So I didn't know that at the time, but we know that now, so that's pretty nice. But all in all, uh, things are going pretty well. You can see here, actually, looking at our power play percentage, it has gone up slightly, because that was around 13% before. So we have slowly started to bump that up, which is quite nice. I'd love to see a little bit more of that into the closing stages of the league. But really, with 20 games left, we're exceeding all expectations that I really had of the um, team. Anyway, we'll get the squad locked in. We're going to be playing the Habs. We are away against the Canadians here. We actually have quite a good record against them, of course. Played them live in the opening episode of the uh, season, and we performed very well there. So, hoping for more of the same here. As you can see, um, I think we're playing our second line right now with Nylander. I'm not sure, actually, because I asked to pick lines, and I didn't double-check where he was playing. He might be in the third or fourth line. Oh, we have uh, some fights going on. Look at this. There's just one player who's just confused. He wants someone to fight, and there isn't anyone. How many players are, are going to get put away for fighting there? Okay. Let let's pause, because I've lost track of what happened there. The play-by-play. -play. Okay. So, three players... Well, two players got put in the penalty box. 
Oh dear, Sil. Oh dear. Well, I, I can't complain. A, f a good fight and he can swing a game in your favour. I'm not sure who quote-unquote won the fight. I guess if we look at the play-by-play, -play, we can look at a really in-depth analysis here. Vice landed an uppercut. Sil wrestled for a better position. <laughs> Sil with the back-to-back -back uppercuts. I, I kind of want to read this out or have some kind of reenactment, but unfortunately I really can't do that. I think Sil won. I think Sil won. I'm, I'm going with a Sil win. If you want to tell me who you think won that fight, feel free to read it. But anyway, at the end of the first, it's still nil-nil. So we'll stick on key highlights for now. If it gets really tight going into the third, then we'll look to mix things up. But the Habs here with a, a face-off in our zone. Hopefully we can make the most of this and actually win it. They have got one player in the penalty box. So we are on a power play here. As I mentioned, that percentage has gone up and we have a chance there. And what a finish that is by Horton. Coming back from injury, maybe a few questions over him because he was coming back into the side that had kind of already established a balance. But he's done a great job with that finish there. However, unfortunately for us, Kadri now injured. That is not good news. Um, uh, right, we're going to move Nylander to first choice centre, I think. Although, who's now going to play out on the right? Didn't think about this, did I? Um... Yeah, should have thought about this. I guess we'll go with that. I don't really want to have nine under playing twice, but I don't know if that's actually going to kind of happen. Let's ask the coach. Is there a way to deselect it? Right, we'll go with that. I assume that what's going to happen there is the right winger position is just going to be rotated between our other three. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, we are in the lead at the moment, which is good, but that injury is a little bit of a concern, because as I mentioned earlier when I was looking at the player stats, Kadri's been one of the big performers for us really this year. Anyway, Bernier there with a, a good save, and hopefully we can make the most of this face-off, hopefully win it. We are play on a um, penalty kill, however, so the Canadians do have that man advantage, and they're going to have an effort there, and wow, well that was a decent shot in the end by, uh, I guess that's Passioretti. I know that's not how you pronounce it at all, and someone's now going to be telling me in the comments how to pronounce it, and I'm going to have to try and remember. But, while well, they're on the attack again, and what happened there? Oh, okay. He scored. That was a very unconvincing finish, though, by, I think it was Mitchell for them there. But anyway, going into this third, we're going to move to extended highlights. It's currently 2-1 to the Canadians. Um... I'm not going to change too much, I don't think, yet. I'm going to do one little thing, and that is going to be I'm going to change my team tactics and have forward usage on just three. So we're going to play our three lines. And we're also going to move our defensive usage to just two. Um, Yeah, we'll go with that for now. We'll go with that. Just uh, st sticking with everything, but just trying to ensure that our strongest lines are the ones that are getting all the ice time here, because really that's going to be the difference, I feel. So we'll see how we get on. Anyway, we do have a face-off here in the Canadian zone. And wow, Fratlin, or Fratin even, rifles that in. A decent little finish right in front of a goaltender who couldn't react in time. Decent to win the face-off like that. Now can we make more of this? Uh, oh, okay, slashing committed there. So we do have a power play here. 13 minutes left of the third. Still 2-2. Of course, last time we met the Canadians, it went to overtime. A few weeks ago so I'm hoping that we can maybe win this in regulation time but at the same time a win is a win um, and right now we're having some decent attack you'd have to say you had a few opportunities and that's another there although the goaltender catches it and uh, it'll be a face off to us in the Canadians half we still do have this power play but there's only 30 seconds left of it as the shot comes in and it's another save if we just have a quick look at the score chart, you can see here we've had a lot more shots than Montreal. They've had a lot more penalty minutes. We've just not made the most of those power plays. One in eight, or one out of eight power plays actually converted for a score is pretty disappointing. But um, nevertheless, we're still looking fairly good here. We definitely seem like we're the stronger team. Maybe Nylander can win this face off for us and get it back and we can make something of it and we can oh my gosh Ericsson just hits it first time the defenseman puts his stick right through that and now we have another chance although it will be dealt with and cross checking apparently given so another penalty uh, kill going to be attempted by the Habs hopefully we can make the most of this one 
Our ratio is really, really disappointing in the power plays. I've been tinkering with it, but I've still not kind of found a formula that just seems to work. But anyway, we're on the attack here. Possession of the puck is ours. And we're building it up steadily, although saved there by, um, I guess that's Tukarski. Uh And now the penalty is over. And it's suddenly, it's 6v6 on the ice. We've got a um, face-off in their zone. Maybe we can make the most of it. We're still 3-1 up, but there's two minutes left on the clock. Time is ticking away. And we need to, try, I guess, just try and do something here. Although that's a decent save by Bernier. I mean, I feel like in this situation I should pro I could change my team tactics to more defensive, but I don't really know if that's a common practice. I kind of feel like the best form of attack is just to... I guess continue playing the way you're playing if it's working for you. So we're going to go with that. Hopefully I won't regret it. Bernier putting in some decent saves here. Really the Canadians are only now having their first spell of perhaps a few attacks in this third. Uh, so we've performed pretty well so far. We're on the breakaway here and well JVR scores. Goaltender have been sent out to kind of commit an extra man forward and in the end we've cut out the Canadians there. 4-2 the score and with a minute left, two goal cushion, we should be comfortable now. I say should because it's certainly not over, but it's just a case of seeing this out. And what seems like a crazily good run of kind of winning live comms that I've done is continuing. I don't know why we seem to win every game that's live. I guess we're not always playing the biggest teams in these live comms, but nevertheless, the Canadians are not kind of anyone to be scoffed at. They're a decent team. Decent franchise, and you'd expect them to do better than they are doing here, really. We have got a face-off in our zone. Oh, sorry, they've got a face-off in their zone. And, well, that's another save by Bernier. What more can you say? 20 seconds left. Just kill the clock. Just kill it. 7 seconds, 5 seconds. That should be game over. 3 seconds left. That is going to be the game. A good, a good win in the end. Um, pretty good kind of unconvincing to begin with but I feel like my tactical mastermind of switching to just two and just three on our defence and offensive lines has worked absolute wonders and I'm going to take full credit for the win because yeah why not <laughs> but yeah a good win a great win in fact against our rivals as I said we were down we were down 2-1 but we really did turn things around in the third looking at our record our record's looking suddenly really impressive uh, 40 wins 20 defeats and 3 um, wins, or sorry, defeats after overtime is pretty decent. Still in third place, which is really nice with not too long left. Kadri is going to be out for 3 weeks, so that is not good. We're going to have to look to maybe change things around. Apparently Kessel continues his fine form, but his goal run came to an end. He'd scored 12 goals in 9 consecutive games, which is just absolutely ludicrous. But anyway, that's going to wrap things up for me, guys. Next episode, I'm not sure who I'm going to do the commentary against. We'll kind of see how things go. It might be one of these Senators games. I might do a game against one of the teams higher up in the um, in the conference. I guess you guys will just have to stick around to find out. Hopefully, I'll see you guys on the next one. If you have enjoyed, as always, smash the like button. Uh, and other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.